Okay, so the fly I'm going to be tying today is the uh, Disco Leech. Um, today I'm going to be tying it out of material that I found at a craft store, a Michael's. Um, and basically it's very similar to body fur. This is the material that I'm using. Um, you can see there's just fibers on one side of like a cord. Um, very similar to body fur. Um, but the reason why I'm using this is because the, the cord is a lot finer, it's a lot more flexible, and these fibers are, it, it's not quite as full. So this, this tail here, which is about four inches, is able to move quite a bit more in the water than if I were to make it out of body fur. Um, typical disco leeches that I've seen have used materials more like this, which this is a polar chenille. Um, again, cord with ha a hackle, like a fiber coming off of one side, just like a hackle. Um, same as here, this is Crystal Hackle by Hairline Dubbin, same deal. So, just longer fibers, basically. So, I'll get to tying it. So, the hook I have in the vise is actually just an eagle claw that I picked up at Walmart. It was on sale. I believe it was about dollar two dollars for 25 hooks and uh, you know they're they're not a bad hook the, the, they're they're kind of there's a lot of variability in between each one you know as far as like the hook point and the size of the barb and whatnot but they're a great way to play around with streamer patterns if you don't want to break the bank in trying out patterns I mean by all means once you find a pattern that you like go ahead spend the money, use the nice streamer hooks I do on most of my flies. But if you want to play around with flies, go ahead, use a cheaper hook. Don't feel that don't feel that guilty about it. So um, the thread I'm going to be using is a UTC uh, 140 in the black. So I'll just get that started. Then you want to wrap back, putting down a layer of thread, trim off our excess. And then we want to wrap down we're back until our thread is about in line of the hook. Okay. And now I've cut about a 12 inch long piece of this this material that I bought at Michael's and I forgot to mention these skeins, I mean when you buy this material as opposed to getting just a small package uh, like this of body fur you get a whole skein um, quite a few yards um, basically you'll never run out and this is kind of a variegated color between it goes from black to like a purplish more claret color and then to a red and then back to the black again this creates a really neat effect on this fly so I trimmed off the the fibers from the cord for a little length here and then I'll I'll keep the bulk down and then I'll just secure that in and then clean up working my thread wraps back and now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to furl this material so basically I'm going to clip a pair of hackle pliers onto the end and I'm going to stretch this material out and then all I'm going to do is put some twist into this material. And now the tighter you make these twists, um, or the more twist you put into this length here, the tighter it's going to furl. But keep in mind, this is something that I found, the tighter I furl it, um, the more stiff the material gets. So you just kind of want it enough so that it'll furl together um, fairly tight throw a lot of gaps. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point about about as long as I want the body which I'm going to say about three and a half, four inches. Then I'm going to double it back on itself. And now all I'm going to do is let go of this end and it'll twist together. Now that's not coming apart. That's going to stay twisted together nice and tight. And that, that forms the tail of this fly. So now I'm just going to clear out some of the fibers here and then tie that in. At this point, I can go ahead and let go with my hackle pliers. 
and then just secure this in going forward with a few wraps and then double it back on itself. We don't want to cut this because this is actually what's going to be the hackle for our body. And then wrap back till we're in line with the barb of the hook. All right. You can just get that out of our way for now. You know, um, you could just make this a really easy fly and wrap this forward touching turns to create a body and you'll end up with something like, something like that. Um, but when you have such a long body, and uh, hooks all the way up there. You want to create some kind of um, point for the fish to hone in on up at the front by the hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of ice stub um, underneath and then palmer this material forward. Then I'm going to comb out that dubbing and kind of create some flash here right up at the front of the fly. A little point of interest. So um, something to maybe help minimize the, the number of short strikes that you get because um, I don't with this fly it's supposed to be easy don't want to try having to put in some kind of stinger hook system or anything like that you could certainly play around with it but um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just dubbing a body with uh, this is ice dub in claret and I just want a nice thick body um, it doesn't need to be perfect it's going to be Underneath, and what I'm going to end up doing is just combing it out into the, into the fibers, into my, basically my, body for like material. Let's just get a nice thick layer of that on your thread, and then start wrapping forward, tighten up a little bit if you need to. Gonna need just a little bit more. We want to work this dubbing forward till we're about two millimeters behind the bead because I'm gonna put a rabbit hair collar in using a using a dubbing loop, which I'll show you. And that should be good enough. Alright, so now we'll wind this body fur material forward. And you want to do a real a nice spaced out palmer. So you wanna you wanna be able to see that that dubbing and we're gonna wanna be able to pick out a good amount of that. So just looking for maybe maybe three four wraps going forward. And go ahead and Tie that off. So just take one wrap over the top, one wrap in front. Do that a couple times. And then trim off nice and close. Stroke back those fibers and clean it up a little bit. Now I'm going to take just work some of those dubbing fibers out and as I do this you'll see that it kind of fuzzies up those those fibers and that's good it'll help it kind of marry a little bit more in the water these won't marry completely in the water each of these little clusters of strands um, but that's okay it creates a nice leggy really buggy weird kind of look in the water and um, when I was using this for bass, they really seemed to dig it. So, so just comb some of that out. And for my dubbing brush, all I really have is a little piece of uh, adhesive Velcro attached to a popsicle stick. So, if you don't want to have to buy one, you can go ahead and do this route quite a bit cheaper. All right. So now we're ready to do the dubbing loop. So if you haven't ever tried this, basically what you do is you take and you let out a bunch of thread. I don't need a lot for just this collar. What I'll probably just do about um, a four inch long 
loop, four to five inch long loop, like like so. Um, and now I'm gonna take my thread, and then I'm just gonna wrap a few wraps right onto my hook shank. And now that locks in this loop. And now I can just let that hang. And I have a dubbing loop tool with a spinner attached to it. If you don't, if you haven't done dubbing loops or anything like that, you don't need to go out and buy one of these tools. You can accomplish the same thing, um, and it's what I used for the longest time, was just a piece of dowel with a cup hook in the end. If you decide you like to use uh, dubbing loops, they're, uh, they're kind of a neat thing for, for making streamer patterns and whatnot, you can go, go ahead and buy one of those tools, but if you just want to mess around, a dowel with, uh, with a cup hook is plenty good enough. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to clip some some rabbit hair off of a hide. This is a zonker strip. So <clears throat> I'm going to take and only take as much as I can handle between my thumb and forefinger without losing any fibers. So I'm just going to go ahead pinch that between my thumb and my forefinger. Like so. And now I can just go ahead and clip that right off the hide. Now without talking so I don't pull this uh, this hair right out of my hand, so I'm just going to lightly let go and then grab the, the ends of the hair. Alright, now I'm going to open up this loop that I made. I'm going to put those cut ends right in between and let it let the thread sandwich it. And now I'm going to lightly pull that so that the cut ends are real close um, to the end. And then you can go ahead and space these out along that dubbing loop that you made. Like so. And now you're ready to give it a spin. And as you spin it, uh, the tighter you spin it, the harder uh, or with the more, the more force it's going to trap the ends of those, those, those rabbit hair fibers in. So just wrap it nice and tight. And now you can basically wind this just like a hackle. You just get the fibers kind of to one side best you can. I'm going to use the rotary feature on my vise to do this. I'm just going to wrap forward or keep in one turn right in front of the other. And after every turn, I'm just going to sweep back those hair fibers. I'm not going to end up using all of this. So you can go ahead and just move your your bobbin holder out of the way. Come up and over the top. And just lock that down with a couple of wraps. Just kind of forgetting about the fibers for now. And then trim that off. Nice and close. Take away any loose fibers. Stroke that back. And then lock that down with a few thread wraps. And now you're ready to go right into your whip finish. And what I like to do when I have instances like this where I have a material where I don't want to get get my uh, head cement into, I just apply it right to the thread and that'll help minimize that. Let's just work that into a good length of thread, about an inch and a half or so of it. Then you can go ahead and just do a three turn whip finish. One, two, three should be good. 
Tighten that up. Clip it, give it a clip, and there's your fly. So, a lot of room for variations on this fly. Um, a lot of different materials you could use. I imagine you could even use like a cactus chenille. Again, just uh, keep in mind certain certain materials are going to move better than others. Um, I really like this material because of the variation in the color. Um, and again, just to kind of help out with with these fibers and the movement, you can kind of brush out this whole length of tail that you have. And uh, that will just kind of help the fly in the water a little bit. So, hope you enjoyed this pattern. It's uh, very reminiscent of some of the plastics that are out there for bass and whatnot. So, um, go ahead, give it a whirl, and I hope it catches you fish.